Okay, we're back for this exercise. We're going to be working on the jaw. As the jaw is in pretty much all shadow, true white won't be used. I tend to use it fairly sparingly through the work. Otherwise it will overcompensate from the actual effect I'm searching for. So I use white substitutes. My white substitutes are my Australian grey. A nice pinkish hue which just adds warmth, especially off the base of the paper here. My raw umber which goes from the pink and plays across onto the, the slightly green tones. And to mix in with that I also work with burnt umber, my raw sienna and ultramarine blue. That means that I've got the full spectrum of my colours flowing through there, all reading as white without being white. In this section here, there is a bit of warmth, so therefore I grab my burnt sienna and just lightly go over the area, giving it a very fine glaze. Doesn't need much, just enough to pull it through. You may have noticed I just got there and started working in the the mouth area with my Flinders Blue Violet. It's my favourite dark worked in conjunction with the darkest burnt sienna from the Lucas range I've got. Produces a very dense, rich dark, which allows a lot of contrast. And you can use a quick counterbalance of warm versus cool. Always an important thing to get a bit of life and vitality to the piece. Before the slight highlight on the mouth, just lightly scumble varying tones of my cool greys, a little bit of a blue grey as well. Over. As I said previously, I like to layer my pastels quite densely. It just helps to bring it all together. My Australian grey is my main base tone that I use any time I'm, I'm using substitute white. So it's normally the first base that I lay down any time I'm doing something such as this. As you can see I'm leaving a lot of room between the strokes. Just working on the directions of hair. Very loosely. Doesn't have to be accurate at the moment, only to build up the blocking. With that then in place, I move back across to my warmer tones. This time in the grey. Stepping through the range of my tonal capacity into something slightly darker. And I just feather it through. Although there is a lot of greenery, I want some very serious warmth through the picture, as you would have noticed off the previous one. There wasn't a lot of a bluish tone used at all. I do prefer to work instead with a very light violet.
once again taking into account the tone of the paper to help it play out. Just a little bit by little bit process. Finally getting there and grabbing the point of my ultramarine. I'm just putting a couple of flecks through. Doesn't have to be anything major. Just enough that we know it's there. With that in place, I then move down into the next area, the base of the main. actually start off a little bit lighter than I normally would. Running the lighter the tones through, that being my raw umber from my Windsor and Newton range. Over the top of this I can then introduce my warm greys. As you can see, the constant layering process, we're working over and over and over. until no particular colour becomes a true read. Everything is working in unison. Warm over cool, cool over warm. Everything playing together. create textures and tones that you don't find in the normal range. Even in this area here, which is quite dark, I can go in with a much softer pastel. This being from the Schminky range. And laying some lighter hair. Without it being so strong as to completely take away from the toning I've already placed in. And of course that will just be built upon with other tones to warm and cool accordingly. Now that we've got the base of that in place, we're going to get there and start dragging a little bit. greenish tone through. With so much greenery in the background, this colour plays a very important part in this piece. The key to any white surface is paying attention to the colours around it as it reflects and reads from it.
the upper part of the gel here, which in reality is quite light. Let's give it a darker toning to start off with. Making sure that there's plenty of warmth in the tone that I'm using. So in time it pulls through as I want it to be. In the shadowed areas you'll always find you've got coloured greys constantly. They are an incredibly important part of the piece. I don't worry about where the darker edges of where the hairs on the face fall. I try and get there and leave a guide for me, but that's about all. No need to overdo that section at the moment. nicely at this point. I'm really starting to get a feel for that now. <laughs> 